Hi guys, it's Jordan. I thought it'd be fun today if I read a story called Dragons by T. Alpert, so we can learn about what dragons mean in different cultures. Chinese Dragons The Chinese love dragons. They believe that the dragon is powerful and wise and brings good luck. There are many temples built to honor the dragons in China. Chinese dragons are snake-like, wingless animals with four legs and five claws on each leg. According to stories, Chinese dragons have a magic pearl, which gives them the power to fly and go into heaven. The Chinese believe that dragons control water, rainfall, hurricane, and floods. Korean dragons Korean dragons are the most kind-hearted of all the dragons. A Korean dragon is a snake-like, wingless animal with a long beard. A Korean dragon has four legs with four claws on each leg. In Korean stories, dragons are water animals, which control water and farming. Japanese dragons Japanese dragons are large, wingless, snake-like animals with three claws on each foot. Japanese believe that dragons are water animals that control rainfall and water. According to Japanese stories, dragons were first born in Japan. Dragons are very popular in Japan and are used a lot in art, music, and architecture. Indian Dragons Indian dragons are wingless animals that are half snake and half human. Indian dragons are called Nagas and are said to live in an underground kingdom. In Indian stories, Nagas are found in rivers, lakes, and seas, and they are believed to be guardians of the great treasures. Filipino Dragons the Filipino dragon is called Bakunawa, which means moon eater. According to an ancient story in the Philippines, Bakunawa is a snake-like dragon with whiskers, two pairs of wings, a red tongue, and a mouth as big as a lake. In the story, the Bakunawa lives in the sea and would rise out of the water into the sky and eat the moon. Thus, the Filipino dragons were believed to be the cause of eclipses. Greek Dragons The most famous Greek dragon was the Hydra, which was killed by the Greek hero Hercules. The Hydra was a nine-headed, snake-like water dragon with poisonous breath and blood. It had the power of regeneration. It grew two new heads for each head that was cut off. In this Greek story, the dragon was killed by Hercules, who burnt its neck stubs to stop any new heads from growing. English Dragons In most English stories, dragons were evil animals. They lived in dark caves, guarded great treasures, and fought with English knights. English dragons have four powerful legs and claws, scales on its body, huge wings, and a sharp tail. They have fangs, poisonous breath, and breathe fire. Russian Dragons In Russia, a dragon was believed to have three heads, which could grow back if cut off. In popular Russian stories, dragons were green, walked on two back paws, had small front paws, and breathed fire. Scandinavian Dragons the most evil among all dragons is the Scandinavian dragon, Nidhogg. He is a huge, multicolored, wingless dragon who lives underground. In the Norse story, this 30-foot, snake-like dragon keeps eating the roots of the world tree, Yggdrasil. This is dangerous for Earth because this is the tree that keeps the universe safe. Bhutanese Dragons the Druk is the thunder dragon of Bhutanese stories. This dragon is the national symbol of Bhutan. The thunder dragon is a giant snake-like wingless animal with four legs and scales on its body. The flag of Bhutan has a Druk 
and the Bhutanese people call their country Druk Yul, which means Land of Druk. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning about all these different types of dragons. Which one was your favorite? Try and draw a picture of your favorite dragon from the story. Bye!